All right, now, I'm sorry to let a few of you down, but I did decide to stop covering the Leilani Simon uh, trial live. Uh, we had some big stuff that's been happening over the last 48 hours, though, with the Leilani Simon trial. Uh, her little wigger boyfriend did testify. Uh, we also have big news when it comes to the Delphi case, Richard Allen, and I have to admit, maybe I was wrong, and we're going to talk about that here today as well. Guys, I'm Jeffy Gunner. This is Chris. Prime time. Let's get on into it. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time. Now, before we get started, let me first and foremost say thank you to everybody that supports the channel. Hell, any of my channels, regardless of platform, regardless of method that you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day on all these different channels as often as I do for the last 18 years if it wasn't for you, the Gun Squad. Love you guys. Thank you so much. And if you, too, find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support Support the channel. Join the gun squad today. You can even find the links to some of my other channels, man. I got 24 of them. Do a lot of different content. Go live every day. All of that good stuff. But guys, we're going to get into these cases. Now, I want to start things off by saying, once again, I apologize to the people that were following the trial with me of Leilani Simon. But I'm going to be honest, man. This is a business, and it was taking eight hours a day. The numbers were low, both in terms of how many people were watching it with me and how many. Let's be honest. Everybody's waiting on Idaho for trials like this, even though we followed it heavily two years ago. Uh, it just wasn't big. I wasn't. It was a lot of effort for little reward. It's just it wasn't financially rewarding, and it was actually taking away from my financial gains on my other channels because I was spending all day here eight, nine, ten hours. Um, so I apologize, but I will still keep updating you because I will still keep watching the trial. I'll just be doing it in my underwear without watching it with you motherfuckers. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into this because we're going to get into first, I think, Leilani Simon. Leilani Simon, for you guys that don't know, it's the, obviously the woman that's being charged with killing her child and dumping the baby in a dumpster and ultimately a landfill. Guys, the day one opening statements, Leilani Simon looked guilty as fuck. And let me tell you, the first two, three days, what they've done, they've just established that she's a lying cunt. And that's just the truth. I went into the trial thinking to myself, she probably just, it was a mistake, an accident, child neglect that ultimately led to the death of her child. And now I'm like, no, this, this bitch was stressed out because, uh, oh, MC, whatever the fuck right here, um, they, her and him wasn't getting along. She probably did off some drugs harm her child. Um, but I got to give this guy some credit. He's actually done a lot. He testified yesterday in day three of the trial. Today will be day four, and he will be cross-examined today, and I'm looking forward to it. Also today is day one of the Richard Allen Delphi trial. Uh, the jury has been sat, and like I said, today will be, I believe it's today, day one of that trial. But let's go ahead and jump right into what we got. We're going to start off with Leilani Simon. Guys, her ex-boyfriend testified, and he agreed to wiretapping of his phone and his hotel room. On the third day of jury trial of Leilani Simon charged with murder in the 2022 death of Quentin Simon, the prosecution relied on the testimony of local detective, which we've talked about. Uh, she was actually really good on the stand. And then also Leilani's ex-boyfriend. He popped up at the end of the day yesterday. Uh, very, very interesting uh, very, very interesting. They showed text messages. They showed a lot. Like, these two had clearly a very toxic relationship. Um, and here's the truth. Let me tell you what we saw. Let me tell you the truth. Leilani Simon, and, and you know they always say, you know, the one that's accusing you is probably on some bullshit. She was constantly accusing my man right here of cheating. 
the reality of this is, is she was the one cheating and sucking the dick of her Tyrone drug dealer. Um, and that came out in text messages, even though they did not allow the jury to see it. She was literally cheating on him with her Tyrone drug dealer every single time she would go over there and pick up her drugs. It had been happening for up to a, a week prior to the killing of Quentin Simon. And they're not allowing it, the jury to see it, because they think it makes her look like a whore. Well, she is a whore, and she is unreliable, and she is a liar. It's just the truth. I have to say that my man right here, um, his testimony was very legit. Um, he pretty much uh, worked with the FBI from the beginning when the FBI sat down and talked to him. They asked him if he would wear a wire, no, not wear a wire, but bug the hotel room, let him, let them live monitor his phone and conversations uh, with Leilani Simon. And he did. And here's the thing about that is that it allowed the FBI to monitor all of his conversations. So he put himself at risk and did all of this in order to catch Leilani Simon slipping, which she did. She was called out. She was exposed as a liar. The person, the friend that she said she got the aura gel from uh, said that that she hasn't talked to her in a long ass time in Hatton that night. There was no aura gel. The aura gel story that she used when she went over by the dumpster, which essentially was when she dumped Quentin Simon off. All bullshit. Uh, you know, the one, you know, one of the main takes with the boyfriend is he drank a lot and they argued. But I have to say, despite the fact I think he's a wannabe and despite the uh, look, man, he uh, to be perfectly honest, he seemed like a good guy that was just trying to be stepdad to everybody. Leilani Simon was a dope fiend that barely wanted to get up for work every day. She treated him like shit, constantly accused him of shit while she was sucking off the drug dealer for a couple bumps. It's just the way that the shit went. Huge, uh, like I said, news that came uh, when it comes to her cheating and, and everything that went down. Let this be a lesson to you. If your partner is accusing you of some shit, it's, uh, there's reason for it. Um, because they noticed the patterns, and you may very well be cheating. But you can notice the patterns because you're doing the patterns. Does that make sense? And that, that's not always the case, but it's, look, man. Look, look, people that accuse people all the time of that shit, um, they're they're very insecure. Like they know they ain't shit. That's why they think you're always fucking someone else because they know they ain't shit. Like Lonnie Simon was constantly complaining. Why aren't you fucking me? Why aren't you doing this? And look, man, you see it all the time with some of these uh, insecure whores, and that's all Leilani Simon was. Everything about Leilani Simon is horrible. She she killed her kid. She was a drug addict. She was a cheater. There is nothing lazy didn't want to work. There is nothing good about Leilani Simon at all. One of the worst human beings you could bump into on these streets ever, period, ever. And I'm glad Daniel Young got away. He got away. He lives in Orlando now. And I think that's great. I think that's great. So anyway, kind of that's kind of the what we're what we're dealing with here um, is that he allowed. So let's take a listen to what the boyfriend testified to. Um, Simon's then boyfriend pre, uh, peppering him with questions about events leading up to Simon's disappearance. Uh, Young can live with them and the parents testified to the state of his relationship with Leilani at the time, which he said was devolving, pretty much non-existent. He testified that Leilani would often try to go through this phone, go through the contents of his phone. Youngkin said him and Leilani were saving up so they could move out the house. Blah, 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 blah. Leilani was constantly late to work, didn't want to go. So it really wasn't going nowhere, right? Uh, so anyway, the footage was shown of him running out the warehouse when she called him. Uh, the FBI wiretapped Youngkin's cell phone for months. Uh, and once again, they showed even video conversations because he wiretapped uh, the house, but just kind of going through some of this stuff in uh, over the past couple of days, uh, day two coverage. Now it is day two of the murder trial of a Chatham County mother accused of killing her son and dumping his body in the trash. More witnesses taking the stand today in the Leilani yeah. Simon case. WSCB's Kaylee Fedko was once again in court. She is joining us live with more. So we're going to cover day two testimony. and day three right now. 
Yeah, good evening, Tina. Now to wrap day two, the jury now has three complete testimonies from today. That's in addition to the five they heard yesterday. That's right. They heard from two FBI agents out of Augusta and a Chatham County police officer and saw a, a lot, lot of cops video just testified of in the beginning. Interacting video with evidence, in yeah. Interviews. Now, the last witness to take the stand today is Chatham County Police Detective Marianne Lemons, and her testimony is not over. Now, we have not seen the video of her car at the dumpster yet, but they claim that they have it, and I believe them. Um, she for two testifies minutes. with video evidence of her several interviews with Simon. In the footage the jury watched today, the detective is beginning to zero in on Simon as a yep. suspect, with the detective telling her, quote, there's not a lot of angles we can pursue right now. Simon, hysterical, and a lot of this video evidence we saw today, hours of it, in yep. fact, and I want to show you what some of that looks like. I check the kids. Everybody's scared. This bad bitch. Fell asleep on the couch. Quitting. No emotion. No emotion at all. Just a retarded Howard the Duck looking hole. It's all over the head. I'll be that problem to mine. Just blinking a million times a minute. Again, Lemon's testimony is expected to pick up tomorrow, and we're also expected to hear from more witnesses. Reporting live in Savannah, Kaylee Fedko, so, WSAB News. Basically, that's what we saw on day two. More of the cops, whatever, investigators testified at the trial. A high-profile trial is underway in Savannah, continuing to gain national attention. The Savannah mother accused of murdering her toddler Look at her. Son. Look at her Today, smirk. The the big old Howard the Duck down, down syndrome Howard the Duck looking bitch. Case. WJCL 22 News' Brooke Butler was in the courtroom for us. Issues Sorry, guys. I'm still sick. Now and Brooke, we know all of the witnesses called today are, lo are law enforcement personnel. What can you tell us? Yeah, Riley, that's exactly right. We heard a lot of testimony about what they observed the day 20-month-old Quentin Simon was reported missing. We also heard a lot of interviews, several interviews. Quentin Talks Simon's with her hand. You can just Simon drug at it. Just complete the drug at his it. Disappearance. In those interviews, Simon tells investigators the night before Quentin disappeared, she was experiencing some dental pain. She said she called a friend who worked at Chevron to get some medicine and headed out at around 1.30 in the morning to get it. She said when she got back, Quentin was still asleep in his pack and play, but the lead investigator no, that's just true. testified that the evidence from Simon's own phone did not line up with her story. Did you find any uh, record of it, of those calls there during that morning? Uh, no, there was no call to the gas station or Missy. That's right. Just One a stupid bitch. One of the interviews played today, Simon told investigators Quentin's biological father had been messaging her on Facebook saying no she record of their messages Quentin. either. The investigator testified she was not able to find any such message on Simon's Facebook records. And Riley, Clearly I do want to point out that the defense is set to cross-examine that witness, the lead investigator, when court resumes tomorrow morning. Clearly a liar. That's what the whole shit is. Now of a Savannah mother accused of murdering her toddler son and leaving his body in a dumpster. The jury heard from several witnesses today, all of them law enforcement. And WJCL 22 News is Brooke Butler joining us live from outside the courthouse with a recap of the testimony that just wrapped up. Brooke. Greg, the jury got to see a lot of videos today. They got to hear exactly what Leilani Simon, the suspect, told investigators today. She reported her 20-month-old son, Quentin Simon, missing. Now, Simon told investigators she noticed her son was missing the morning of October 5th, 2022. She said the front door of her home Complete was, home was liar. open, which was unusual. She said everything was normal the night prior to her son's disappearance. She said her son fell asleep at around 10.30, she but knows at around she's 1 30 in the morning, she was experiencing some oral pain, so she headed to a Chevron to pick up some Oragel. One witness testified surveillance video he obtained from that Chevron failed to show Simon stopping at the gas station. Exactly. Simon also told investigators Quintin's biological father had been messaging her on Facebook, implying he wanted custody of his son prior to his disappearance. The lead detective said she looked into those claims but couldn't find the messages. None. Did you at some point send, uh, obtain a search warrant for uh, her Facebook records or a portion thereof? Yes. And did you send that to Facebook? I did. And did they send you some information in response? They did. Some of her Facebook records? Yes. Um, were you able to find those uh, 
messages that she's describing in the Facebook records that you got back? No. Bingo. And Greg, in one of the videos that was just played for the jury before they were let out, Simon is emotional and crying, and she could be heard repeating the words, he was my happy baby. He was my happy baby. Mm -hmm. And Greg, I was. want to point out that the defense did. Was. She knew he was dead. Did cross-examine the state's first witness, really asking him why he did or did not admit certain she things into evidence. He set to cross-examine the state's second witness, the lead investigator in the case, tomorrow morning. Back to you. But, but. That's right. And it did continue Wednesday. Trial of Leimani, Simon will continue with the defense cross-examining the lead investigator. Yesterday, the jury heard from several witnesses, all of them in law enforcement. They also heard what Simon told investigators the day she reported her toddler son missing. Leilani told police she had dental pain the night before Quentin went missing. She says, "Yeah, there's nothing new here. You, basically, you you guys know what's going on there. Um, but I will tell you now, um, there's some videos of them questioning her about the death." And now to the trial for the Savannah mom accused of killing her own toddler and leaving his body in a dumpster. That jury seeing new video today capturing Leilani Simon <coughs> being confronted by investigators for inconsistencies in her story. WJCL 22 They started Sports to hone in on her and go after her. We've seen multiple interviews Leilani Simon has done with investigators at this point. The most recent interview shown to the jury was conducted just a few days after Quentin Simon's reported disappearance. Now, you may remember, Simon told investigators the night before she reported her son Quentin Simon missing, she headed to a Chevron at around 1.30 in the morning to pick right. some Origel from a friend. Investigators got a hold of surveillance video, and they testified she did not stop at the Chevron and instead pulled into a nearby mobile home park where investigators believe Simon's body was dumped. In the interview, an investigator yeah, Leilani saying they never saw her car at the Chevron, but Simon doesn't back down. We know where you live. It's in a video Prosecutors also pulled up a web search they recovered from Simon's phone on October 1st. In it, Simon Googles whether it's normal for a mother to resent their child due to its father. She Googled, is it common for a mother to have resentment or even anger towards her child because of the father or another or reason? Or another reason. A testimony is still ongoing. Wow. But we're going to have another update for you on WJCL 22 News. At <clears throat> Back to you. Wow, that's all I can say. All right, guys, the boyfriend did take the stand yesterday. On new at six, emotional testimony today from the former boyfriend of Leilani Simon. Simon is on trial, accused of murdering her toddler son, Quentin, and then leaving his body in a dumpster. WJCL 22 News' Brooke Butler joins us now live from outside the courthouse with what Daniel Yunkin had to say. Brooke. Shannon and prosecutors today really hoping to further cast doubt on this story. Leilani Simon told investigators today she reported her son Quentin Simon missing mm -hmm. using Daniel Yunkin's testimony. Now, Simon told investigators when she woke up the morning of October 5th, 2022, she noticed her front door was wide open and that her 20 month old son was all of that was proven lies where he slept. She said she looked everywhere and couldn't find him, so she called 911. Simon told investigators her boyfriend at the time, Yunkin, had seen Quentin before he left for work hours earlier that day. Check out what he had to say on the stand today. Did you look in Quentin's pack and play before you left? No, I didn't. Um, you okay? Yeah. At some point during the investigation, was there a period of time where you told the police that you had seen him that morning? Yes, sir. Were you sure about that at the time you said it? No. Um, and are, are you sure now that you didn't see him? I didn't look. Simon told investigators she had left in the middle of the night to pick up medicine for her mouth Damn. from a Chevron. She said she was only gone 12 minutes and all the kids were sleeping when she got back. Investigators testified surveillance video showed she instead pulled into a mobile home park located near the, the Chevron 
and parked in front of a dumpster. Now, Simon insists she is innocent in all of this. Of course she We're does. We're going to hear more testimony from Daniel Yunkin when court resumes tomorrow morning. Greg and Shannon. Yeah, it's going to get right, good, well, man. So it's going to get good. Details. Guys, it is definitely going to get good. It is heating up. It is wild. But guys, I'll tell you something else that's heating up. Some major shit going down in Delphi. Let me say this. I said that if a person confesses, then that means they probably did it. However, they're, they are saying that Richard Allen confessed to crimes that didn't even exist, like killing his grandchildren and things like this. He might have really been fucked up, or this could be a strategic ploy, um, but there's something bigger than that. Let's take a look. Delphi suspect Richard Allen's attorney claims that the hair at the crime scene belonged to someone else, not even Richard Allen. Attorneys representing Richard Allen in the highly anticipated Delphi murder trial, which starts today, have claimed cops ignored a hair at the crime scene that was not Richard Allen's. Allen's legal counsel, Andrew Baldwin, made the bombshell revelation during opening statements as jury selection got underway in Allen County, Georgia, Indiana. Richard Allen is accused of murdering Delphi teenagers, which we already know. Um, on Tuesday, Baldwin told the court that the bombshell DNA evidence was found in Abby Williams' hand, but it wasn't his hair. That was the first time such a revelation was made public. While the lawyer did not say who the hair belonged to, he vehemently, vehemently defended that the lock of hair was not a genetic match for double murder suspect Richard Allen. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. McKellen argued in his motion that composite sketches released in 2017 were not relevant, so they also have omitted the sketches which is crazy, <clears throat> which is what they wanted to do. It's almost unbelievable. It's almost unbelievable. There was 60 confessions by Richard Allen. And, but once again, he, 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 he confessed to shooting them in the back. The girls were not shot. 16 people willing or at least able to put their lives on hold for a solid month. This is wild. miles away. Where their days will be spent in a courtroom and their nights will be spent. Richard in Allen might not have done it. Any takers? Because amazingly, it took less than two days to find those <clears throat> 12 jurors and four alternates in the long awaited murder trial of that guy, Richard Allen. Bo Bumfield. Indiana. What do you know? The opening statements are set for this. Been a while. Case. Richard Allen is accused of killing 13 year old Abby Williams and 14 year old Libby German near an abandoned railway bridge in Delphi. This is going to be a wild, man. Wild trial. Seven and a half years ago. We can't see the it, though. Two bombshells were dropped by the defense before the opening statements even get underway. Yeah. One of Allen's attorneys revealed that hair was found clutched in the hand of Abby Williams when they found her. That body. means a lot. We've never heard that before. That means a lot. And bombshell number two, the hair did not belong to Richard Allen. How's that for reasonable doubt? On the other side, of course, are jailhouse phone calls to his wife where Allen allegedly admits over and over to killing the girls and, quote, incriminating statements to both inmates and guards, end quote. All of that during his time in lockup. But the defense says that Allen said all of those things under duress and yep. in a state of psychosis. Right. And remember those composite sketches that the police put out during the five long years they were looking for a suspect? The sketches <sighs> bear little resemblance to Richard Allen. And the state now wants those barred... Exactly. Hearing for that is set for Son of a bitch. Uh, but I want to bring in Russ McQuaid, a reporter with News Nation affiliate Fox 59 in Indianapolis. Uh, great to have you, Russ. Thanks for being on. So let's talk about that hair because that it, it just feels like that it would have just taken the oxygen out of the courtroom. Of course it would. And what does it mean? Well, for so many of us that have covered this case, not only for seven and a half years, but the two years going back to this month of 2022 when Richard Allen was put under arrest, and right away we had difficulty getting answers about the search warrant, about the probable cause. Even his whereabouts as he was moved from jail to jail in secret without lawyer mm -hmm. representation. Uh, this is why when we attended the uh, jury selection the last two days, it's very important not only to see what the jurors say when they're questioned, can you be fair and impartial, but you also have to listen to what the attorneys say because through their questions, you start to get a lead on where they're going with their strategy and their case. And it was on the second day today, not the first day 
when Andrew Baldwin, one of the defense attorneys, as he is uh, trotting out some of the aspects of the state's case, which he says won't hold water, and he said, yes, there was hair discovered in Abby's hands, and that hair did not belong to Richard Son Allen. Son of a bitch. He looked at the various photographs of Richard Allen. Of course, the most recent photographs, or most early photographs we had were 2022, not 2017. Yeah. If you look at Richard Allen, uh, he's a bald-headed man with post-cropped hair. So, and there's always been well, speculation. Well, with the beard, though, you know. Well, and he did. I, I want to ask I you this, though. He, yeah. I do, I, let me ask you this, because there's some other stuff that's, that really sort of jumps out. In 2022, Libby's grandma said in an interview that the police told her there was DNA in the case. That's right. Just days after the actual murder itself in 2017, the sheriff told your station that they had DNA evidence, and then Ooh. law enforcement later asked to have that information pulled from the website. What? Does that start to square with this bombshell today? I was told that was, web, that was DNA of a state trooper. Assuming it was a state trooper that was down there investigating the crime scene, I was told that personally within the first few days of the investigation. Then that information sort of went away. It's like a lot of things oh. in this case where they pop up and then suddenly they don't seem to hold water, as you had previously mentioned. Now we have a hearing on Thursday morning. Son of a bitch. The prosecution. That's this morning. Wash the sketches which came from a state police artist taking the description of witnesses on the bridge of people they allegedly saw there that day, that as recently as this last July, the lead state police trooper verified and vouched for those sketches in open court. And now, two months later, the state wants to pull those from evidence because they say they don't look like Richard Allen. They were only investigative tools that we were using along the way. And if the defense oh, is successful I bet. in showing these to the jurors, it will just confuse them because they don't look like Richard Allen. Thanks for watching. Man, that's some bombshell shit. These trials are getting crazy. Does this change the way you look at the Richard Allen thing? I, I, it does me. Like, who's the DNA belong to? In the clutches of Abby. Why was his confessions took him seriously when he said things like, I shot him in the back? Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take a breather and say maybe I was wrong. Maybe the confession doesn't mean shit. Both of these trials going on right now. I'm loving it. I will keep bringing you updates daily here on this channel, guys. I'm Jamie Gunner. This is Crime Time. I love you guys, man. You guys have a good one. If you like what I do here, you find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. I'm gonna get up out of here. You guys have a good one, man. Let me know what you think.